All right, so now that the president is officially under investigation, it is important to know what this impeachment process is going to look like going forward in this inquiry. The Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, has until Friday to hand over documents to Congress related to Ukraine. Obviously, we heard Schiff say he's going to subpoena documents from Giuliani. How is this going to go forward? How will it be different from Watergate? With me now is someone who has specific experience with that investigation, Nick Ackerman. He's a former assistant special Watergate prosecutor and former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York. Good to be with you, Nick. Thanks oh, for coming Good to be in. here. Um, you, one thing you do caution Democrats on is you say you've got to be very, very cautious about relying solely on a transcript. Well, that's correct. Why? Well, because transcripts aren't always reliable. The best evidence is always the underlying tape, if such a tape exists. So but as we far as we understand, it doesn't for this one. Right, and we don't think it does. So what, one of the things that the House Judiciary Committee, or the House Intelligence Committee absolutely has to do is really button down whatever versions of this uh, um, memo exist, whatever notes exist, they have to get all of the witnesses to the conversation in and make sure that they actually button down that what is represented there is the conversation. You bring up something very interesting that differentiates this investigation, specifically the more narrow Ukraine probe that Pelosi has, you know, is, is saying, let's right. keep this focused on Ukraine with Watergate and the origins of that. Well, what's really different this time is that this investigation starts in Congress. It doesn't start with a prosecutor or a special prosecutor that then has to get permission to give grand jury material uh, to a congressional committee. This is something that the congressional committee is starting from scratch and all of the investigation here is being done initially by Congress. Mm -hmm. And that is unusual compared to what has happened in the past. How much of this investigation, hearings, et cetera, do you believe will be public? And does that matter? For example, the whistleblower, obviously that's not going to be public testimony. I would hope not. Um, uh, because the whistleblower, all he does at this point is give a roadmap as to other evidence and other people uh, that can be investigated by the committee. Uh, but I think as an initial matter, most of this will be done in secret, behind closed doors. But I think it's extremely important at some point that certain of this evidence, certain of this testimony be presented to the public. Because part of what they're trying to do here mm -hmm. is to put together a package, a case, that is not like a prosecutor proving a case beyond a reasonable doubt, but putting together a case that will get two-thirds of the United States Senate to move off the dime and remove this president from office. The, the reason I say that is because to do that, all of these members of Congress, we're speaking to two this, this show, um, are, are home now in their congressional districts talking to their voters, right? And they need a majority of the Americans behind them. They need that push. They do. The and, polling and is changing a little bit, but I ask, if, if a lot of this isn't in public, does that matter? It does matter, because I think the public has to be behind this. I mean, what you're talking about is removing a president that was elected under our normal procedures through the Electoral College. So if we're going to do this, and again, it's not just it's not a legal sort of proceeding like a, a, a criminal prosecution. This is also very political. Mm -hmm. And to be political means that you have to have a public buy-in. People have to accept, sure. yes, that the evidence justifies an impeachment mm -hmm. and justifies removing this president from office. You know, people think of Mark Felt or Deep Throat as the only whistleblower in Watergate. Many people do. And you say that that is not the case. So I, I'm interested in your take on that and the president tweeting last night, I deserve to meet my accuser. Well, first of all, in Watergate, the initial whistleblower, this has never been revealed before, uh, was a man by the name of Manuel Giberga, who was the head of Hispanic outreach in the Nixon White House. He, the day after the Watergate burglary, he called a New York Times reporter, Tad Schultz, and basically told him that the break-in was orchestrated right up at the top in the Nixon White House. The New York Times didn't run with that story because they had no way to corroborate that information. They needed at least two sources to print the story. Now today, we have a whistleblower statute. We didn't have a whistleblower statute then. If we had, that person could have gone through the normal channels and basically filled out the forms and written a memo just like this whistleblower has done. And what's interesting here is that this information came out about five months before this election in 1972 when Nixon was reelected. 
you have to wonder if we had a whistleblower statute mm. back then and this information had come out in June of 1972, would Nixon have been reelected for a second term? Mm. Thank you so much, Nick. Good to have you. I Thank know you. we'll have you back as this process plays out. I appreciate it very much.